Well, here we are again. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, uh, I do apologize for that, but I did explain why uh, in the previous video. I have just come back from Belgium. <laughs> Today, as you can tell by the title, I am going to be giving my very brutal and honest opinion on Charlton Athletic's summer transfer window in the 2022-23 season. And I'm just going to get straight into it, people. I'm just going to give my straight, honest opinion right now. Short and sweet, the very simple answer, we failed. We have failed. I just feel let down. I've got a really sour taste after that window and I just feel frustrated, I feel angry, I feel let down and I think we've come up short, I think we failed and I don't really think it takes a genius um, to realise that, you know, and even even our manager, even our manager Ben Garner has, uh, has come out and said the exact same thing after yesterday's performance against Bolton. We're going to do it a different way this time. We're going to start by talking about the outgoings, the players that have left the club. The reason why is because there is literally a shed load of them. Chris Gunter has linked up with former Charlton boss Johnny Jackson and assigned for AFC Wimbledon after he was released in the summer. What Johnny Jackson sees in that man is absolutely beyond me, especially considering that he didn't play for him. Uh, I think at all. It hasn't officially been confirmed yet, but I do understand that Ben Watson has since retired from professional football after he was released from the football club, which I think is a shame because Watson obviously has had a very established and very long footballing career with a lot of great memories. Obviously, the biggest one standing out being scoring the goal against Man City in the FA Cup to win it for Wigan. Uh, his time there was absolutely fantastic. And obviously, at Nottingham Forest as well, before we signed him, he was a really good player. People were saying he was their best player, people were going as far as saying. And unfortunately, his time at Charlton didn't really work out. And it is a shame, you know, that his career did end in the way that it did with us because ultimately, it was just a pretty poor uh, stint for him. And giving him a new contract at the start of last season over Darren Prattley is probably the most criminal thing this club has done over the last couple of years, or one of the most criminal things. This club has done. But Pape Soare is, well, fuck knows where he is right now, to be honest with you. I couldn't really care less. He is well, by far, I think, the worst fullback I've seen play for the football club. I don't know what sort of genius thought it was a great idea for us to sign him. Club captain Jason Pierce has since retired from professional football after he was not offered a playing role and he has taken up, I believe, the under-18s coaching role at Charlton. I may have that wrong. I know he's obviously a coach in the academy, but I'm not sure as to... Um, what team he's coaching, but I believe it's the under 18s. I may be wrong, but yeah. PSC is now part of the academy coach setup, which I think is really good. Obviously, yeah, it's obviously a shame that he's not part of uh, the first team anymore, and we could probably do with him right now, to be honest with you. But yeah, Pierce, again, very, very good career, very good long established career, played well over 500 games. Striker Connor Washington has signed for Championship side Rotherham United on a free. Adam Matthews has linked up with former Celtic boss Neil Lennon and has signed for Cyprus side Ammonia in Kazia. They were in the Champions League a few years ago. And I don't know how Matthews has been able to pull off that move. But as I say, the Neil Lennon connection has helped him out quite nicely there. Stephen Henderson is down his local job centre. Akin Famuwo returned to Norwich City following his loan spell. We did have the option to make that deal permanent, but we opted against that. And he has now made the move to Darren Moore's at Sheffield Wednesday on a permanent deal where, if I'm not mistaken, he is currently recovering from a lengthy injury. Noel John has returned to Tottenham Hotspur, having not played a single minute of football for the Addicts. Elliot Lee returned to Luton, where he was then released by the Championship side and he now applies his trade in the National League with Wrexham. I was quite surprised he fell all the way that down the footballing pyramid but then again that dead poor money coming in nice and strong for him and to be fair to him he's doing fairly well over there. Jonathan Lecco has returned to Birmingham City. How this guy has a contract at a championship club is absolutely beyond me. Juan Castillo and Mason Burstow have returned to Chelsea following their loan spells. Juan Castillo returns to the Premier League side as their 17th choice left back and Mason Burstow now links up with the academy set up following his transfer in January. Ben Purrington left the club and signed for Scottish side Ross County despite League One interest. We had a little bit of a love-hate relationship on the channel with Purrington, but I think he left the club as a very solid uh, option for us. And I must admit, I was quite surprised that 
Um, we didn't decide to offer Perrington a, a contract when I felt that he would have offered something to this team. And I think, again, would have been a very useful option for us considering we don't have a left-back right now, which we'll get into a bit later. But yeah, I felt he would have been a, a really good option for us to have under Ben Garner's system as a fullback that likes to push forward and likes to score goals. Australian goalkeeper Ashley Maynard Brewer has gone out on loan again, this time to Gillingham in League Two on a season-long loan where he is recovering from a dislocated shoulder. Michael Josh Davison made a permanent move away from the club. We spoke about this in a League One transfer room around video he has also linked up with former Charlton boss Johnny Jackson uh, at AFC Wimbledon which I think is a good sign in for Wimbledon obviously he's had two previous loan spells at League 2 level with Forest Green and Swindon where he's done really well a couple of the youth academy players have gone out on loan on short term deals the first one being Deji Alleraway who has made the move to National League side Wildstone on loan until January the club do have the option to recall him at any point which I think we should probably be doing at some point uh, with the lack of options we've got in the defensive line which I said we'll get into a bit later but yeah I must admit when it first came out I was quite surprised that Alera Ray was loaned out because I, judging by his kit number he obviously was given the number 27 I thought that he would be involved in the team somewhat and he would be our fourth choice centre back and he obviously won the League One Apprentice of the Year award last year uh, when he played last season under Adkins I felt that he looked very comfortable at this level and he could definitely do a job. But to be fair, it is a move that is great for both parties. I think it obviously gets him some much needed experience. He's never uh, got regular first two minutes at any professional level. So I think he will get regular minutes at Wildstone. Obviously, Wildstone had a number of our players uh, from last season at their club. I believe uh, Charlie Barker, Aaron Henry and Charles Claydon were all there last year. So Dylan Gavin and Jeremy Santos have both made the move to National League Southside Tunbridge Angels, where I believe they're now both injured. <laughs> Ryan Vigors has signed for Needham Market on a deal until January. That club doesn't even sound like a football team. But anyway, wish him all the best over there. I've no idea what division they're in. We spoke about Charlie Barker very briefly, but he has headed out on loan again, as well as Harris O'Connor, who made his debut the other day, actually, in the Pelper Johns Trophy against Gillingham. The two of them have gone out on loan to Hemel Hempstead Town. And the final player to leave the club in the summer transfer window was on transfer deadline day, and it was midfielder Alex Gilby. He confirmed his exit from the club and has signed for Steve Evans' Stevenage on a loan deal until the end of the season with the option to recall him in January. Now, what do I think about this deal? I mean, obviously, it was clear with the amount of midfield options that we had. I mean, we had eight of them. We had Dobson, McGrandles, Aaron Henry, uh, Morgan, Fraser, Forster Kasky, Gilby and Jack Payne. We had eight midfielders. And in a formation where we play three midfielders, we play 4-3-3. Three, three, I think six is probably the bare maximum that we needed. I think him going down to League Two is a bit much. I think he is way too good for that league. Um, I think it is a bit unfair on him, really, and he should really be playing at League One level. But then again, it is a really good signing for Stevenage. I think they've got themselves a decent midfielder at that level. Obviously, Gilby did have a number of interest uh, from other clubs. I believe Leighton Orient were interested, and obviously Lincoln City as well were interested, and Lincoln were supposedly very close to getting the deal done. But journalist Ryan Whelan then was reporting on the deal as it, as it got more advanced. And uh, yeah, the deal fell through because Gilby wanted to move closer to home, which he certainly has done now with a move to Stevenage. But the thing that confuses me most about this deal is the fact that it's a loan deal. And the big thing about it is that Alex Gilby is out of contract at the end of the season. And I don't want to tempt fate here, but I would say that it's very likely that Gilby will leave the club on a free at the end of the season. So I don't understand why we are not trying to cash in on as much money as we can pos physically do. I, I would much rather have sold him for cash rather than loan him out for a season where it's no guarantee that we're going to recall him in January and he's going to leave the club on a free. I would much rather us have sold him, to be honest with you, but it's a decent move for him. Like I said, League 2, I think, is a bit... It's a, it's a step too far down for him. I think he should be playing League 1 football, but ultimately, his time at Charlton has been underwhelming. It hasn't really worked out. You know, he's been ravaged with injuries, and ultimately, it just hasn't worked out. You know, we just haven't seen the same player that we saw at MK Dons, you know, that won their player of the year two years in a row, and he come to us, and unfortunately... The move hasn't worked out. He has shown good quality in patches, but unfortunately, that's just it. You know, patches, no more than that. So there are all of the outgoings, all of the players that have left the club since last season. And as the transfer window has progressed, I wish everybody that has left the club, whether that be on a temporary basis or on a permanent deal, all the best in their future endeavours, unless you're Chris Gunter and Papo Soiree. But anyway, let's dive now into the business end of this video. The ingoings, the players that have joined the club in the transfer window. <sighs> Signing number one and signing number two actually came within the space of 24 hours. As we completed the signings of Rochdale centre-back Owen O'Connell and Swindon Town right-back Mandela Egbo. Now, 
Obviously, at the time, people were not particularly happy with these signings for two reasons. For O'Connor, it was because it was a free deal. As a matter of fact, for Egbo as well. They were both free transfers from League Two clubs. And Egbo especially, I think there was a bit of ambiguity because he came from Swindon, of course, Ben Garner's former club. And obviously, as you know, we raided Swindon quite heavily in the transfer window. Obviously, Ben Garner, then obviously the assistant manager, Scott Marshall. I believe we signed one of their analysts as well, but that wasn't confirmed. And then obviously, we signed three of their players. One of them, of course, being Egbo. We'll get into the other two a bit later. Later. People weren't particularly happy with that, but I think that comes really naturally with when a manager leaves another team. You know, the first thing or one of the first things he'd like to do is to raid his former side. And I think that with the three that we have got from Swindon, I think on paper there's a lot to like about him. Now, we'll begin with O'Connell. Now, O'Connell has started every single game for us so far, I believe, in league and cup competitions. Now, obviously, with Rochdale, uh, Rochdale fans were saying, you know, he was by far their best player, he was their captain, so a leader on the field. and. So far, I think it's safe to say he's been a bit shaky, especially in the opening few games of the season. I think he put in some really solid performances against Plymouth and Cambridge. However, yeah, I don't think it's been the best of starts for him so far. But hopefully he does grow into it as the season goes on, because obviously the jump from League 2, and not to mention, I disrespect to Rochdale, but a lower end League 2 side to a League 1 side that is supposed to be fighting for promotion this season... It's quite the jump. It is early days and O'Connell hopefully will grow into it as the season goes on. Now, as for Mandela Egbo, he did pick up an injury in pre-season against Dartford. It is a knee injury. Garner did say that he's been out for weeks as opposed to months and he is currently out on the grass. Garner did say that the players that are out injured will be returning within the next two weeks, which obviously is really positive news. The thing with Egbo is we can only go off what we know in terms of on paper and in terms of his previous uh, stint at other clubs. And from what I can understand is that he's a fullback that likes to get forward, which is exactly exactly what we want you know we want those fullbacks to overlap the wingers and put balls into the box and maybe chip in with a goal here and there but also you know he likes to say that he loves a crunching challenge a goal line clearance I do express concerns in terms of game time and I think the injury hasn't helped him at all with that obviously the form of Sean Clare at the moment I would probably go as far as saying that Sean Clare has been our best performing player so far this season that may be up for debate but Clare has really made that right back position his own and it's going to be it's going to take a lot really for Egbo to you know, take Claire out of the squad. But I have no doubt that Egbo is a good player and I think that he will eventually grow into the team when he does recover from injury. But yeah, it just wasn't, a, it's not the ideal start, you know, for his Charlton career to basically get Charlton to end up on the operating table. But yeah, I've no doubt that he's going to be a good option for us and hopefully he will come good. Signing number three was, of course, another Swindon Town player, the second Swindon Town player that we signed. And that, of course, was shot stopper Joe Wallacott, the League Two goalkeeper of the year in the team of the year. And he has been outstanding so far for us. I think everybody will be in agreement with that. I don't think goalkeeper was the major position, the main priority that we needed to strengthen in the window because, like I say, obviously we had McGillivray who people will say that he was absolutely shocking. I don't think he was as bad as people made him out to be, but I still don't think he had a brilliant season. He was just, you know, just a bit naff. Do you know what I mean? You know, his, his distribution was poor. He couldn't command his box, but his shot stopping was excellent. And I do stand by that. He's one of the best shot stoppers in this league. But Garner decided that we needed more competition in the keeper department, which I'm not complaining about whatsoever because the keeper that he's gone and found has been outstanding. You know, he's absolutely brilliant. He's pulled off some unbelievable saves that have kept us in games at times. And I think at times, for the most part, he's been let down by the people in front of him. I don't think you can really blame him for any of the goals that we've conceded because he has been outstanding. He's been one of the best performers so far this season. And it's definitely, you know, given, I guess, McGillivray a rocket up the arse, you know, because he needed that competition last season because... I think I said it in a previous video last year, he was not taken out of the team by choice. You know, he'd missed three games last season, two for the birth of his child and the other one for uh, him contracting COVID, which Stephen Henderson and Nathan Harness had to replace him for. And Henderson, as much as I loved him from his last stint at the club, doesn't have it anymore. And Nathan Harness, no disrespect to him, I know he's good and young and up and coming. However, he's not, an, I don't think he's ready for League One level, to be honest with you. So I guess you could say we needed that competition and Wallacott has now provided that. And I think he's been absolutely outstanding so far. So a really good pickup on a free transfer. And I think he's going to be an important player for us. But of course, as we know, he could potentially be off to the World Cup in November if Garner decides to call him up. If that is the case, obviously, as we know, Craig McGillivray did not make the move away from the club like we thought that he would. Uh, he can, can slot in nicely as our goalkeeper option for the next month, which some people will have something to say about. Personally, at least we've got a League One experienced goalkeeper in there if Wallacott is to be called up. Signing number four, you would take a look at and say that it is one of our best signings of the window. And that, of course, was Lincoln City midfielder Conor McGrandles, the Scottish midfielder, by far one of Lincoln's standout performers for the past two years. He was a key figure 
in their 2020-21 playoff campaign where obviously they made the playoff final but unfortunately for their sake Blackpool did go on to beat them. Grendels has come to this football club and has been Charlton. He suffered a concussion and a fractured hand in the space of about two weeks. I don't know how he's managed that but thankfully he is now back involved in the squad now. He was obviously on the bench against Bolton yesterday. Um, yeah, so far it's not been the best of starts for him. It's been quite... Again, quite shaky, but then again, obviously, he's been injured multiple times already. Signing number five was our first loan signing of the transfer window as we completed the signing of Fulham right-back Stephen Sessignon on a season-long loan. And again, a lot to like about Sessignon. I think he's been really good so far. Of course, once again, as we're talking about it so many times in this video with injuries. He's another player that's out injured, but as Garner said uh, in the press conference the other day, and I mentioned it earlier, most of the players that are injured will be back within the next two weeks. Since he's been out, he's been a big miss. Obviously, he is predominantly a right back, but he's very versatile in that he can play on the left back position as well, and he can also play through the middle if we absolutely need him to. And he's made that left back position his own. You know, the first few games of the season, the link up play between him and Corey Blackett Taylor was outstanding. It was absolutely brilliant. You could see that he is a player with a lot of confidence. He likes to get forward well. He likes to put balls into the box. He likes to take on players with a bit of trickery and a bit of skill. And yeah, there is definitely a player there. And I think he is going to be a key figure for us this season. Again, just a shame that he's been injured. And then we come to the third and final Swindon player that we signed in the transfer window. Signing number six, of course, being attacking midfielder Jack Payne. Signing a free deal. Payne was being chased by a number of clubs in the window, I believe uh, Sheffield Wednesday were interested in him at one point as well. But we ended up with the signature. Uh, not surprised with, obviously, Ghana connection. But, yeah, Payne, again, I think has been really impressive. Obviously, he's mainly come off the bench. He's not started for us in the league so far. And with the performances that he has put in recently, or throughout the season, should I say, he's got to be knocking on the door to start games because the guy has come on in every single game in the league and has made an impact. You know, he's a little whippet, you know, five foot three, kind of like another Erhanos Tuma that we had a couple of seasons ago, but just a lot better. A player that just likes to take on his men. He's got loads of pace. You know, he can get forward really well. You know, his passing range is brilliant. He's got a couple of assists already to his name so far this season. And yeah, for me, he's got to be knocking on that door to start games because he seriously is. Like, I can definitely see a player in there. You know, League One experienced and yeah, a lot to like about Payne and hopefully he does get some starts soon because I think he deserves it. And then signing number seven followed not long after that with our second loan based off performances so far. This is our best signing of the transfer window. It is, of course, Crystal Palace wide man Jezerin Raksaki. This guy already is just showing that he's way too good for this league. He is definitely the level above this division. Seriously, I know he's Palace. I know that people are going to say something about that. However... He is going to be a big player for us this season, provided that he doesn't get injured. The kid just oozes confidence and just pure talent. You know, the, I've never seen a player have so much composure at a young age at 19 like he does. You know, if you, have you seen his goal for, against Wickham that, like last week? It was absolutely ridiculous. And the ball comes to him, he just fakes shots past the defender and slams it in the back of the net. No 19-year-old has that sort of confidence. And... Like I say, that performance, that debut, should I say, against uh, against Plymouth was just absolutely extraordinary. He was absolutely brilliant. Just a player that just loves to take on his man, you know, get involved, get crosses into the box. He obviously went missing against Cambridge, put in a decent performance against Wickham and then obviously against uh, Bolton yesterday. He was obviously another key figure in our attack. You know, he got the, got the assist for Scott Fraser's goal. Uh, had another opportunity in the second half, which I felt we should have done a lot better with. He should really have found the back of the net with that chance. But needless to say, he's going to be a very key player for us this season, provided Palace don't recall him and they do let us have him for the full season because he is going to be a real, real star in the future. You can definitely see that. Now, this is where the positivity kind of stops with this video because I wish I could continue on with the ingoings and talk about more about the signings that we've made. But... That's where it stops. That's it. Jezer and Raksaki was our final bit of business. It just frustrates me. It just absolutely frustrates me that that is all we've done. You know, it was very clear from the offset at the start of the season that there were positions that needed to strengthen. In particular for me, two we know straight away, striker and centre-back. And I would throw a third one in there in left-back as well. And I know that a couple of people do agree with me. But from the start of the season, it was clear that those positions were needed. I mean, Ghana was screaming out a month ago that we needed another centre-back option because we had three. We got O'Connell, we got Lavelle, we got Innes. Two of them are injury-prone and the other one has had a really shaky start to the season. So we are in desperate need of another one or were in desperate need of another one or are in desperate need of another one as we know we didn't sign one. And in the striker department, I mean, need I say more? 
you know, from what I've seen so far. I don't think I need to say anything, to be honest with you, from the season, from the striker department. And God come out uh, a couple of days ago making a statement saying that we're looking to sign a striker, a striker that can specifically run in behind and can, you know, get forward with a bit of pace and score goals. Very similar to what we already had with Connor Washington. Now, people obviously are getting a bit, you know, are getting the ump with the fact that we released Washington. The fact of the matter is, Washington, he did get double figures in the both seasons he was here. However, he couldn't finish his dinner. One-on-one -on -one opportunities, his finishing was very inconsistent. And ultimately, I felt that it maybe was the right decision for him to move on and just get in a better option. And he also said we wanted another centre-back as well which obviously is very positive, very good news. Transfer deadline day rolls around and we are looking at only one player. The journalists were reporting that we were after a striker before we got a deal done for a centre-back. But of course, as we know, only one player was being discussed uh, to make a move to the club. It was a striker and it was a familiar face as we were looking to get a move done for Macaulay Bon from QPR on loan for the season. Now, as we all know, the deal did fall through on deadline day. Now, from what I understand, uh, QPR wanted to change the deal from a loan deal to a permanent deal. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm glad that happened. Because if you have a look at McCauley Bond's Instagram post, which he's since deleted on his story, you can kind of give off the impression that he didn't want to be here in the first place. Ultimately, that is the striker that we wanted to sign. That is the striker that we wanted to bring in to solve our problems. And people can say that, oh, yeah, he's a good option. You know, he's going to be really good for us. And don't get me wrong. I did like Bon. I did like him when he played for us because he stepped up when it mattered in the championship season. He scored 11 goals in a very poor championship side that was ravaged with injury. But ultimately, it was the way that he left the club, obviously, in League One. You know, he said his head was turned. He's joining a big club in QPR. And obviously, his missus absolutely hates us now. <laughs> to, to be honest with you, Bon was not the answer to our problems. You know, he was not the striker that was going to get 20 goals a season. People say that, you know, he was the answer to our problems. You know, he said that he was going to fit the system. Personally, I think Washington would have been a better fit than Bon to the system. Because Bon doesn't strike me as a player that can run in behind. And ultimately, we can say last season, yeah, he's a proven scorer at this level. Bond scored one more goal than Washington did last season in a team that finished above us. It's not exactly convincing, is it? Obviously, loads of people were moaning about Bond joining. I was as well, to be fair. I didn't want him. I didn't want to sign him. I didn't think that he was the answer uh, to the striker problems that we have at the club. But ultimately, not getting one at all, I think is criminal. Not signing a centre-back at all is criminal. Not signing a natural left-back when we don't have one is criminal. You know, this transfer window started off with so much promise. So much promise. I felt that we were doing some really good bits of business. We were going under the radar. You know, we, none of our rumours were really broke out by any journalists or the media. We just were quiet about it. We got deals done. And I think for the most part, the seven that we have signed, O'Connell, Egbo, Wallacott, McGrandles, Sessignon, Payne, Raksaki, most of them are really good bits of business to get them done on frees and loans. But the fact that that's it, and we're now left with the squad that we've got is a disgrace. And that's why I think we failed. Because what we're now left with is a 23-man squad, if you don't include Aaron Henry as a first-team player. And 22, in fact, if Jake Forster Kasky ends up leaving, because there's been heavy rumours suggesting that he's leaving the club. We have got a thin bone squad that is already being hit with injuries. And even Ben Garner said it himself. He said it after that game against Bolton, a 3-1 defeat. Didn't watch the game, so I'm not going to comment too much on it. But from what I've heard, it was one of the worst performances we've put in. And even Ben Garner said himself two things that sums this club up at the moment perfectly, to be honest with you, off the pitch. In that the squad that we've got right now is not enough. And that a top six finish is overachieving. And I just don't understand how we end up in this position, to be honest. Especially off the start of the season when Thomas Sangar couldn't stop opening his mouth like he'd done last season. When he kept saying that, you know, top two is the aim. We're going to get top two. We're going to get automatics. We've got one of the best budgets in the league. We've got one of the biggest budgets in the division. But then you've got Ben Garner coming out and saying, we don't have enough money to sign Harry McCurdy. How does that add up? How does us having a top four budget, one of the best budgets in the league, to then Garner coming out and saying that we've not got enough and that top six is an overachievement with the squad that we've got. How does that add up? Main people that are at fault for this 
is Soundguard and the recruitment team. Because how the fuck do you come out and say that we're looking for a striker and the best option that you have is Macaulay Bond on loan? You have had the entire transfer window, even long before then. You've had since the end of last season, May, you've had four months to sign a striker, to sign a centre-back. And what have we gone and done? Once again, leave it to the last minute. We panic. We have Bon as a target. How is Bon our only striker target over four months? How is that possible? And now look what we've got to do. We've got to delve into the free agent market again. The same mistake that we've done last season. Last season, in the summer window, we panicked. We took way too long. We signed. We brought in players that were very much underwhelming as the season progressed. We left it too late on transfer deadline day. And then we had no natural left back and no backup goalkeeper. So what do we do? We delve into the free agent market. We sign Pape Soare and Steven Henderson. Soare has been without a club for over a year. Has not played any football for over a year. And he ends up playing football for us. First team football. One of the worst fullbacks. One of the worst signings we've ever made. Steven Henderson also without a pre-season. Now look at what we've got to do. The same thing. The centre-back department. I just said it. We've got three centre-backs at the club right now. Two of them are injury-prone in Innes and Lavelle. And the other one, O'Connell, has had a shaky start. None of them being left-footed centre-backs either. And I know at the moment we've got someone on trial. As we all know, uh, Richard Corley reported it the other day. We've got Terrell Thomas, former, U former Charlton Academy player, uh, currently training with the club. I've seen people saying, yeah, I'd take him. He's going to be a good option for us. I don't think he will. I think he'll be an awful signing, personally. And the reason why is because he's been without a club. He hasn't had a pre-season. And to be fair, the previous stints he's had at other clubs has also left something to be desired. His time at Crew Alexandra was shocking. He somehow ended up a move to Reading. We don't know how we managed that. But to be fair, Reading probably needed all the help they could get last season. <laughs> They'll sign literally anyone that year. But the thing is, if we do sign Thomas, he's going to be miles behind everyone else. And in the centre-back department where you could definitely say we need options and we need competition in that position, is Thomas really going to provide that? I don't think he will. I don't think he will at all. And then you've got the striker department. We panicked. We panicked. We didn't have any sort of target. Like I say, how do you have Bon over the course of four months to prepare and have transfer targets and look at options? Bon on deadline day, on loan, is the best you can come up with. Now we're left with... Striking options with Jaden Stockley, who can't hit a barn door at the moment. Chucks and EK, who's Mr. Glass, constantly out injured. And then Miles Leeburn, an 18-year-old. Full credit to Miles Leeburn. He's been absolutely fantastic this season. But the fact that an 18-year-old is our best attacking option is a serious problem. No disrespect to Leeburn. But we badly needed a striker. And now we're going to delve into the free agent market again. Someone that is unfit. Someone that's not had a pre-season. Someone that will more than likely have to wait until October before they're starting games. And someone that will leave the club at the end of the season because they'll be given one-year contracts. And I've had a look at the free agent market. There is no one there that is A, realistic, B, good enough, and C, going to be fit enough to come straight into the first team and make an impact. It's not going to happen. And the same with the left-back department as well. How do we come away with no natural left-back? We've got Steven Sessignon, who can play that position. Fair enough. He's currently injured. Our backup option is Charles Claydon. I've said it in previous videos. Claydon is not a left-back. He is a winger. He is not a left-back. The defensive side of the game, he's not good enough. And that's not his fault, because that's not his position. But why are we playing him? I've seen highlights from goals um, from the goals last, from the goals yesterday, the first goal he gave the ball away. The second goal, he's in no man's land. He got caught out for the second goal. He's not there to cover his man to stop that ball going into the box. He's not a left back. If Clayden is our backup left back option for this season, it's a serious problem. The left back position since Royce Wiggins has left, with the possible exception of J Jada Silva, you could maybe throw Ian Martin in there as well. Left back has been a problem at this club. And now look at us. We've got a winger playing in that position. Clayden is not a left back. He's done well. He's done well, to be fair to him. He's put in some good performances. But the defensive side of the game, I've not seen enough of him in that position. And I'm not surprised because I've said it so many times in like the past few seconds. He's not a left back. This transfer window had a lot of promise. It had a lot of promise. 
We were going under the radar. We were getting business done. We were getting deals, decent deals done on freeze and loans. But we've had how long? We've had four months to properly prepare, to send scouts out, to scout players, look at options, look at potential targets. And we come away with no striker, no centre-back, no natural left-back, and a 23-man team that is already being hit with injuries. And I feel sorry for Ben Garner more than anyone else because he's not been backed. And quite plain and simply, I know, look, I know Sam God has his reasons. I know he had his reasons for not investing in the team. He's losing £8 million a season. We can't spend money if we're not earning any. You know, he's, he's all about the cost-cutting measures. He's trying to break even. I know he has his reasons. But you have to invest. You have to somewhat back him. And give him the tools. You could see it in the press conferences. I sat in the press conference the other day. You know, you, 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 he, he tried to give off the perception that he wasn't frustrated. You know, he said we needed to look forwards. But you could see deep down inside that he knew he wasn't backed properly. And he was frustrated. He said, hopefully I'll have some money to spend in January. And then he comes out after the Bolton game and he says, oh, we're going to overachieve if we finish top six. This is what we what well, this is what we have. This is the best that we can do with the squad that we've got. The last three transfer windows, last summer, the winter window in January, and this window has been a fuck up. Sangar said he made mistakes in the summer, and he said that they wouldn't be replicated. He learned from his mistakes. This transfer window is proof that he hasn't, because he's managed to fuck this up, this one up as well by not investing. And people can say, oh, we got promoted without spending money in 2018-19. This is a completely different league now. Teams are throwing money left, right and centre. Look at Ipswich, look at Portsmouth, look at Sheffield Wednesday, Derby, teams like that. Teams that are just throwing money at it, left, right and centre, bringing in quality players. Look at us. We've come up short and we've not got the players that we wanted. Now we're delving into the free agent market to sign players that, let's face it, will not make an impact. And I really hope I'm wrong. I really do. I really, really, really hope I'm wrong with that. But I just can't see it going any other way, really. I don't think anybody that we bring in, if we do decide to put, sign free agents, they're going to make an impact. And we're left with a squad that at the moment, in certain positions, particularly up front, are not performing. And we're left with a team that is constantly ravaged with injuries. And we're being hit with it already. It's not good enough. So that's what I think. That's what I think. I just feel really let down. A really sour taste in my mouth after that. Really disappointed. But hopefully Ben Garner can salvage something because, like I said, I think he's done wonders so far. We look a lot better than what we did last season. Much better start. But we need to start performing, especially away from home. And hopefully we can do that under Garner. Garner has my full back in. He has my full back in 100%. The players that put on this shirt have my full back in. But it is evident, following his conference notes after yesterday, that there is a problem. And it can't be ignored. Thank you all for watching this video. If, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Turn on post notifications so you are notified of every time I upload a new video. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what you think about our transfer window. Did we do well? Did we fail? Let me know. This has been Tyler Rowlinson. Have a nice day. And I will see you all in the next video, whenever that will be. Take it easy. Stay safe. And I'll see you all then. <sighs>